thousands, thousands, thousands of people, thousands. All right. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Um, so you can see from the number from the empty pew side of things, uh, a little less packed in here than it has been in the past. We anticipated that. We also anticipated that when most of our older folks would stay at home tonight watching on Facebook, that a lot of our younger families would come and would bring their kids. So you're going to hear noise all through this event. I want you to hear me say that's okay. In the past, this has been a, a pretty stuffy, pretty pretty solemn event. Uh, it's it's okay if your kids make a little noise. Mine's mine's going to do it. It's all right. Um, I do want to open us up in a word of prayer. Say thank you for coming. Thank you for those of you that are joining us on Facebook. And we'll open up with a word of prayer, and then we will get started. Father, we thank you for today. God, we just thank you for the blessings that you've poured out on us today. We thank you for lives that have been changed. We thank you, Father, for people that have made decisions to follow you, people that have made decisions uh, to join into the ministry. And Father, we just pray for this night. We pray for tonight for everybody who plays a part. God, we pray that you would just bless us tonight, that you would bless our hearts uh, through this event. And God, for those that will see this for months and weeks to come, God, that you would just bless them through the music, through the word, and Father, we just pray a special blessing over these kids that are here, that you would just uh, open their hearts to love you, help us to love them. Father, we just pray that you would just watch over us, and in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we love you. Amen. So to start us off for tonight, you guys are in for an awesome special treat. Um, there is one, one really special thing I've been looking forward to tonight. Uh, unfortunately, it's not Corey's message. That's going to be awesome, I know. It's not Heather's book. That's going to be awesome, I know. Um, but Robert and Patty are here with us, and they asked if they could come in and do a traditional uh, Venezuelan Christmas carol. And so we decided to start it off tonight with them doing that song. All right? Good evening. Okay, uh, I ask uh, the pastor. Uh, okay, we we want want uh, participate in the the candle service, and we want to sing for us for the Lord. Uh, a beautiful Latin American. It's no Venezuelan uh, uh, song. It's a Latin American. This is Mexico to Argentina. We sing that song. Feliz Navidad. Okay, <laughs> all to the speech for Feliz Navidad. If you know this song, uh, we invite you, okay, to participate and sing with you know. Thank you. Can you clap? Yeah. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, próspero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, próspero año y felicidad. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, próspero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad, 
Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas From the bottom of my heart I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas From the bottom of my heart Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad time Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad One more time Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Feliz Navidad Prospero año y felicidad I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Navidad, hoy es Navidad. Thank you so much. All right, well, we have the amazing task of following that up. Um, <laughs> we're going to try our best. So uh, we're so glad to have you here. And uh, let's just do Let's just stand to our feet. And uh, we're going to sing a couple of songs. Um, and, just, uh, and just, again, and continue on what we just did. And, and just continue to sing, continue to just uh, lift up our hearts. Uh, so let's sing this out. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching Oh, silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Sing it out, church! Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born Down in a lowly manger The humble Christ was born And brought us God's salvation That blessed Christmas morn hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born and go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go 
tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. And sing choirs of angels, sing in exultation, oh sing all ye bright host of heaven above. Glory to God, glory in the highest, oh come let us adore. seated. There's this girl named Mary. She loved God and she loved to clean stuff up. But one day, an angel appeared. Mary was so surprised. Kind of scared. But the angel said, Don't be scared, you're going to have a baby. And then Mary said, How can I have a baby? I'm not married. But the angel said, It's all right. The baby will be God's son, Jesus. Mary was supposed to marry a guy named Joseph. She said to him, Look, I'm going to have a baby. Joseph was pretty surprised, too, because he didn't know how he could be a dad. But he wanted to take good care of the mom and the baby. Right before the baby was going to be born, Joseph and Mary had to go on a long trip to a town called Bethlehem. But it was okay, because Joseph made sure that Mary didn't have to walk by herself. But when they got to Bethlehem, it was so full of people. Nobody had roof on them. They tried one place. They didn't get other place. At the last place, the guy started to say no. Then he said, wait. I've got a place for you out back. But you gotta be okay with animals. There weren't even any beds. But it was nice and warm. When Mary had Jesus, they wrapped them in cloth. And put them in the animal food dish. No one else knew about Jesus yet. But there were some shepherds just outside of town. 
angel, angels showed up. The shepherds were like, oh no, what's happening? But the angel said, don't be scared. I have something really, really awesome to tell you. God's son Jesus has been born. He's in Bethlehem. He's all wrapped up in a blanket. The shepherds were super excited. So they got everyone together and ran to find Jesus. They were really glad when they found the right place. They were like, is this where Jesus is? And Mary let them come in. And they even got to hold and cuddle the baby. Sometime later, some kings were living far away from baby Jesus. But God sent them a special star. The kings followed the special star a long way. A really long way. A really, really long way. The star showed the kings right where Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were. They even brought a special presents for baby Jesus. Then everybody had a big party. Because they were so glad that God sent baby Jesus. That night was the best night ever. It was the best night ever. It was the best night ever! It was the best night ever. At this time, we'd like to invite the uh, kiddos to come on up. Uh, we're going to have a story time. So this is Llama Llama Holiday Drama by Anna Duke. Llama Llama Holidays, jingle music lights a blaze. Sparkly candles, yummy bread, dress up clothes in green and red. How long until that special date? Only 15 more shopping days. Llama Llama has to wait. Llama Llama Holidays, ads and signs in store displays. Fluffy snow and funny elves, goodies piled high on the shelves. Just how many days to go? Llama Llama wants to know. Time to buy and search and shop. Mama carries, Llama drops. Buy a friend a rubber duck, pirate ship, or tractor truck wooden blocks or building set. What will Llama Llama get? Llama Llama holidays, hustle, bustle, cooking craze. Measure sugar, roll the dough, 10 more batches left to go. How many more days again? The special day will be coming when? Take the cookies out to cool. Frost a great big batch for school. Add some sprinkles, almost done. Teacher gets the fancy one. No more cookies left to bake. Llama Llama tummy ache. School has dreidels, songs and bells. 
big ribbons, woodsy smells. Draw a snowman, make a star, decorate a candle jar. Are there many days to go? Llama time is going slow. Mama needs a present too. Get some sparkles, sticks, and glue. Roll it up and wrap it how? Llama wants to give it now. Llama Llama holidays. Unpack stockings, unwrap trays. Shiny silver fancy plates. Llama Llama waits, waits, waits. Cut out snowflakes, tape them up. Pour some eggnog in a cup. Oops, it's yucky on the floor. Llama Llama waits some more. Stringing lights is not much fun. How come Mama isn't done? Is the big day coming soon? Llama Llama starts to swoon. All this waiting for one day. Time for presents right away. Too much music, too much fluff, too much making, too much stuff, too much everything for Llama. Llama Llama Holodrama. <laughs> Come and listen, little llama. Have a cuddle with your mama. Sometimes we should take a rest and hold the ones we love the best. Wishing, waiting, wanting things. We forget what this time brings. Gifts are nice, but there's another that true gift we have, each other. Llama Llama, warm and snug, gives a kiss and gets a hug, snuggles close with Mama Llama. Happy Holidays for Llama. So in the spirit of that, um, we have some gifts for your kids um, to help them to realize that this year, if they don't get everything they may want, uh, the most important thing a lot of times is to have something and somebody to hold on to. So if you guys would help. <laughs> oh, by the way, they squeak. <laughs> Probably should have said that before you went, oh. <laughs> That's going to be a backfire. <laughs> All right, guys, if you have your llama, you can go back with mom and dad now. Okay. I haven't seen her. Oh. Are we taking a song? Yeah, we're going to need you in a way in a minute. Matt. Hey, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey Matt, are we gonna? I guess we'll lead him the whole church and the way yeah. to Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, as as <laughs> as we're gonna listen to squeaking here for a little bit, um, let's let's just sing this out as a church. Uh, it's a it's a it's a song for kids, but it's also a song for us. So let's sing this out. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. 
The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Sing it again. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Amen. Hello, hello, there we are. Can you hear me now? Did not think through the squeaking. <laughs> Maybe would have put that at a different point in the service. <laughs> so this year, I mean, 2020 has just been different. And so we wanted to give you a message of just hope and encouragement today. And I hope that's how you um, leave here. Uh, one of the things I want to share with you is like a lot of the things that change is we just have a new normal, right? Like I, there's a lot of things we wish we could like go back and do different and things like that, but it's just our new normal and we don't know what it's going to look like going forward. That's why it's a normal. It's our new norm. So each year, I don't know, going back maybe a decade, um, which is really saying how old I am now, but... I would pick a word, a phrase, or a verse of some type um, that just kind of was, was setting me up for the year. And I know that sounds like really cliche and that kind of stuff, but it helped me. Like, I don't do well with, with New Year's resolutions and all that kind of stuff. I mean, clearly, when you do, like, the weight loss resolution, that one I gave up on pretty quick. Um, but there, there's a bunch of those type of things. And I would challenge myself, and i try all these kind of things, and it just nothing ever seemed to work. So year after year, I would just add something to, to my life, whether it was, like I said, a verse, a phrase, or something, where I went, okay, Lord, what can I do to better follow you in this coming year, whatever that may be? Um, one year, it was to be intentional, to actually like do everything on purpose, not just go through life and go through things like in happenstance and all this stuff, but to actually be intentional. And, and I know there's so many layers to this verse, but talking about the 99 and the 1, just understanding that at some point there was a 1. And I went, I'm so grateful at some point in there I was a 1. And so to be intentional, be intentional like that. Um, one was no more excuses, just for nothing. I, no more excuses. For the longest time and still now, Psalm 139, for God to search me and know me. And this year, um, I picked another psalm, and it's in Psalm 95. It goes with a song, O Come All You Faithful, but it says, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise uh, to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Little g, as in false gods. In His hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. And this is the part that I want to hang on to for this year. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So funny little story with the llamas. Um... I had already picked this verse, and it was about the sheep of his field, and I was kind of going on this shepherding and the sheep thing, and so a guy who um, had a donation of stuffed animals, I messaged him, and I said, hey, um, do you have like 30 sheep that I could use? He says, oh yeah, I've got them for you. I've set them out aside for you. Went and picked them up, and um, they weren't sheep. They were llamas. <laughs> so I was like, okay, plan B. <laughs> I have a llama book. Why? That's a whole other thing, but... All right. So when you hear this verse, it, says, it, it sounds like David here is inviting you to come and worship. It's an invitation to come in, right? But it is not this passive phrase. Um, it, it almost kind of comes across when he says, Oh, come let us worship and bow, bow down, that he's saying, Hey, if you would like to, that's completely cool. If not, I'm okay with that too. But that's not at all what he was saying through here. 
Parents, have you ever looked at your kid and said, come here? Oh, yeah. I mean, dozens of times, right? Come here. Did you mean if you feel like it, when you get around to it, you know, as, as, you know, take your time, whatever. Is that what you meant by come here? What did you mean by come here? Come here. Like now, right? I mean now. When David is making this statement, it was not about this, this passive if you want to. When he says, oh, come, let us worship and bow down, he is making a definitive statement of come now and let us worship and bow down. So when me and my siblings were, um, were younger, um, if any of you from around here, if you remember the old Walmart here, um, I used to think we only went to Walmart to get spankings, but we, as soon as we'd hit that door, we would take off to the, the, the clothing section, and me and my brother typically would dive into one of those round racks, and we just thought it was, it was hilarious, and we would sit in there until mom got scared. Um, and we would, now typically we gave ourselves away. Typically it was it was the giggling and the stuff in there. And then out of nowhere, this arm reaches through the clothes and would grab you out of there. Now my mom wears a lot of rings, and I now realize why. It's like like fishing with a treble hook. Like you may not get the bite you want, but you're gonna get something. So she would reach in there and she would grab a hold and she'd pull you out of there. The few times she didn't, it, you could always sit there and hear over the loudspeaker. Corey and Colby, please come to the front now. It was never this like sweet thing, you know, this little lady coming over thing going, can you please come to the front? No, none of that stuff. It was, it happened so often. They were like, Corey, Colby, come to the front now all the time. And my mom was so embarrassed all the time. But it wasn't a when y'all get around to it. Y'all just hang out, do your thing, go, go see the fish at the back, go over to the food court, do whatever you need to do and just come up front whenever you want. It was no, it was now. Um, similarly, in Joshua 24, Joshua is talking and he says, starting in verse 14, he says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua first makes a declaration for himself. He says, as for me. See, that's, where it, that's the first part of it. As for me. And we can kind of, we can add a little part of the verse in there and say, as for me, I will serve the Lord. And out of my obedience in serving the Lord... I will see everyone around me have a willingness and desire to serve the Lord also. When I first started looking at that verse, um, and you may have heard me say this in the past, but when he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He is not saying, which we typically see on a, in a placard or something on our um, doors, I mean, on our porches and those kind of things. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The statement is far greater than that. It's not about as for me and my household, that is included. But the house of Israel is what is in, in view here. <clears throat> and when the word house is used, it is talking about a whole collection of people. The house of Israel. So as for me and the entire house of Israel, we are going to serve the Lord. Have you ever heard this? I mean, I know you've heard the song, Mary, Did You Know? <clears throat> First part of the line says, you know, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? And all these questions that are fed to Mary. Do you think Mary knew? Yes, Mary did know. See, Gabriel came to Mary and came to Joseph and shared these things that were going to take place. Did she know who Jesus was? Yes. This wasn't a shock to Mary. But there is somebody who is always oddly absent in this story. Do you know in all of the Christmas story that we read, and typically we like to read out of Luke or we read one of the other, or Matthew's account, and we read these parts, what is the one thing that is never mentioned? Joseph's words. Joseph's never recorded speaking. 
Like, I mean, why would Joseph not be recorded speaking? Is it because it was unimportant? Was he unimportant to the story? I'm going to challenge you to say like, he was honestly the most important part of this story. We often remember that Jesus was sinless and fully God, um, but we tend to forget that he was fully man as well. And so if he had the ability to sin, why didn't he? Why didn't Jesus sin if he had the ability to? Because he was fully man. We forget that part. The answer is Joseph. See, for a Jewish boy, it was a father's responsibility to train up his child and to teach him the scriptures. See, in our culture today, we typically put that off on the ladies. We put that off on the moms in the household. They're the ones who, who bring the kids to church and they train them up. No, it was the father's responsibility to teach scripture and to train them up. So why not hear directly from Joseph? Because the mark of effective discipleship doesn't come from the boasting of the one discipling, it comes from the disciple. Okay, I want you to hear that again. Why not hear directly from Joseph? Because the mark of effective discipleship doesn't come from the boasting of the one discipling. It comes from the disciple. Did you hear the words of Joseph ever recorded? You would think no. But every time you heard Jesus say something like, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone when he was tempted in the desert. Again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord God to the test, and so on and so forth. How did Jesus know these things? See, Joseph was, we know Joseph was there up until the time Jesus was 12. We don't hear a mention again, again after 30. So it's believed that somewhere between 12 and 30 that Joseph has, has passed away. So somewhere as Jesus was a young child being brought up from between at least birth and 12, he is being taught the scriptures. He is being taught the Old Testament. He is being taught the old law. And this is being ingrained in him. He knew the scriptures. God chose Joseph for the task of training up him in the flesh. Now, we have teachers in here, right? Is, is there ever a more panicky moment than when you do the principal evaluation or something? Do y'all still do those? Or the principal sets it? Okay. You absolutely panic during those? Not anymore? You're good now? Anybody else? Where's Katie? Do y'all? You don't care? Do you? Nobody? Oh, y'all are tough. They are tough. When Matt's sitting back there, it makes me nervous to stand up here and preach. <laughs> there is something about the, this test. And, and God chose, and I want you to just wrap your head around this for a second, that God came to this earth, the creator of all the world, came to the earth as a baby. <clears throat> and as He came to this earth as a baby... He chose Joseph. He chose Joseph to train himself up. How would you like to be charged with that? I mean, you're looking at your own son and going, I'm training up my son, but at the same time you're looking at your son going, am I doing it right? I mean, it is, it, it is this ongoing test. So let's go back to Joshua. My prayer is that you first make the declaration for yourself that you would choose this day who you will serve. And when he says, as for me, make it for you first. And then the declaration for your family and beyond. I said at the beginning that I'd chosen for myself Psalm 95, specifically verses 6 and 8 this year. It starts with, O come, let us worship and bow down. Not because it's convenient, Right? There are going to be times in your life you walk through some tough times, you walk through some struggles. Some, of the, some folks in here, that may be right now. You may have just come out of a valley time, and sadly for some of us, we may be going into a valley time. And yet, in there, it's not about coming and worshiping the Creator of all things because of convenience. He goes on, he says, Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is 
our God. Why do we worship? Because he's our God. So let's go back to that come word when it says you come to this place. You come and you worship. It wasn't a suggestion and when you feel like it and when you get around to it. It was this command that says you come and worship God. Why? Because he's God. That's it. We need no other explanation. This isn't your typical Christmas message, but Christ is the message. So everything we talk scripture, we're talking a Christmas message. So I want you to hear this and this, because he is God, we worship. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Don't harden your hearts because he's trying to speak to you. I, I hear... Uh, often, whether, whether family or friends or my own students, and, and you talk to them and you talk about hearing God and they look at you like it's a completely foreign concept. And you go, I, I promise if you'll just stop long enough, you can hear him. Now I'm not going to say it is this audible voice of God. I'm going to say it's this big booming voice. Oftentimes for me, it just sounds like me. But the way that I can know for sure if that's God it will always line up in his word. Always. So I hope your new normal going forward is a new declaration over your life. I pray you are declaring first for yourself whom you are serving, then you are effectively living him out to the world around you, and then like Joseph, the greatest testimony to living out your life as an effective discipler, is the firm and steadfastness of the next generation. We wanted to put an emphasis on the kids this year. Not that we haven't in years past. It's just for this understanding that what we're doing as, as parents, as grandparents, as, as friends, aunts, uncles, what we're doing for this next generation is training them up in the ways of the Lord. Just as Joseph trained up Jesus. It just seems like such a foreign concept to think the man that we heard nothing from, we heard everything from. Just in a completely different way. As Matt and Robert come forward, um, let us all realize half will stand firm. Your, fl uh, your flame won't flicker. It will be steadfast. They're going to come forward here in a second and we're going to start. And what you're going to see is just like when you are discipling someone else, you're going to see that spread to the next person and to the next person. You know how candlelight service works, right? Too often we, we just do this because it's what you do this time of year. But when you understand the actual impact, the, the visual of what is actually taking place as you invest in the lives of these little ones, when I, when I hear um, them over here singing out these songs of praise and I'm going, man... If they can get it, if they can get it right now, how their lives can radically change. If they can get it right now, everything will be different. But folks in this room, it takes us to step up and disciple and to walk them through this life. I take that challenge, and I pray that is the same for you. And that becomes your new normal going forward. As you effectively share that light with the person next to you, encourage them to stand firm and steadfast. And one after another until every person is standing firm. Parents, you may have to help steady your child until one day they are steady enough on their own and they're ready to help steady the next group. Some of you may grab the arm of one of our seasoned members of the body of Christ. And like a short candle that has had a longer life to burn, um, they may need to be steadied once again. If the body of Christ will stand firm and help others stand firm, then watch what the Lord can do. If we will love as we have been loved, show grace as we have been shown grace, and forgive as we have been forgiven, we can radically and dynamically change the world around us. And always remember that you are loved, you matter, and you have purpose. Let us pray as these go around. Father, we thank you for tonight. 
I thank you for every family that is in here. I thank you for every person who has taken on the challenge to disciple someone around them. And maybe there are folks in this room tonight who are saying, hey, I have never really understood what it means to disciple. And maybe they are somebody that we can come alongside and disciple them. God, we pray that you just show us the the hand that needs to be steadied. We pray that you show us the light that needs to be lit to the next generation or the next person beside us. Father, we pray that you move in the lives of these families. And no matter what happens in 2021 or anything else, God, you are still God. And because of that, we come and we worship you. In your son, Jesus Christ, holy name, amen.